it's the very heated topic indeed. So looking forward to some 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 rigorous sharing um, and 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 insights uh, for the for this session. So that's panel four, and it is now turned eleven o'clock on my side. Um, you know, I think everybody, all panelists have, have five minutes and then we'll stop for, for some quick uh, discussion. Um, <coughs> some quick discussion and uh, yes, then we can uh, move on to the next one. So, uh, go via, well, that's the first slide. I think, I'm not sure if Shanali has joined us here yet. Um, she was busy in the other, oh, Shanali is here. Hello, and sorry. Hi, Shanali. <laughs> no problem. I need I to run between rooms. <laughs> I know, I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. We were just getting I saw, I saw your exciting on that I side. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. Apparently an hour is not enough for any of us. Never, never. We can talk for hours about what we do. Um, <laughs> sh yo, sh shall, we, shall we jump into this? Again, with the five minutes, then we'll 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 stop for 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 a couple of questions, and then we'll go on to the next panelist. Hi Neil, JP, I'm going to share the Hi, slide. JP. <laughs> yes, uh, JP, are you first? No, no, I'm sixth. No, okay, <laughs> you're sixth, Omar. Oh, so, all right, hundred percent. I think I've got the slides. Will you share the slides? No. Can I, I, I share the slide? I thought the, the I thought you would share all our slides, that one slide. Yes, I right. I will share I will share all our all our slides. I am a victim of load shedding, so if I do disappear, Neil, um, do you I will want me back. to share slides? I'm stable at the moment and the first speaker, so if you oh, that would be brilliant. Slides, the, that. that that would be brilliant because after my presentation, I fell off again. <laughs> sure, give me one second. Thank I'm you. just going to move that screen so that it's in in a better place. 100%. Thank you. I'm not going to do a, an introduction. Maybe these, the speakers will just introduce themselves briefly. I think a lot of speakers have introduced them in other rooms. Um, so maybe we'll just get into the thick of things. Um, because I think that's why we are here. Shanali, thank you so much. And then the floor is yours. It is. I'll, um, I'll put in the chat when there's one minute left. Thank you very much, Neil. I'll try and keep an, an eye on that. Wow, folks, one of the things that I, I think has been very interesting in jumping from room to room in this way is just kind of transitioning topics. So um, I thought that I would start in terms of, of thinking about apologies. I just want to get that out the way. Um, I thought that I would start this assessment conversation not by necessarily saying what we, we sort of had absolutely learned, but more some of the things that we'd learned to be worried about um, over the last 18 months. And I'm going to talk not necessarily just from an institutional perspective, although there will be some threads of that, but I'm also going to talk quite a bit about, um, from my perspective as somebody who runs a course in the online space and who, um, who's, who's kind of been, been teaching through who's taught twice through pandemic, both uh, for my formal course and in formal staff development ways. So that's kind of where this comes from. Um, but to move myself along smartly, there are three things that I'm worried about. The first thing that I'm worried about is the relationship between assessment as a learning practice and assessment as a policing practice. That for me was something that just came so clearly to, to attention during the shift to emergency remote teaching and the shift to physically distance learning on our campus. Um, it became absolutely clear that staff use assessment as a way of managing student behavior and as a way of policing student behavior. So there's a weekly quiz. You have to show up in class for the quiz, which means that everybody attends that one session. Or we had staff who, who do things like uh, they're pop-up quizzes. You don't know if they're happening until you arrive there on the day. And then there's a very short quiz for very minimal marks, but you have to do it. Um, and that kind of use of assessment to 
perhaps unkindly police student behavior, but perhaps more kindly to manage or direct student behavior, became, it became very clear that that was a complicated knot for many of us. And that was something we would need to, to unpick. So to refer to my course, I give my students something to do that they've got to submit virtually every second week. Uh, or every week they've got to do something even. And that is about me trying to manage my students' behavior, make sure that they're constantly engaging with the course, constantly working on things. But the consequence of that in the COVID um, scenario was that if people were sick, if there was a death in the family, if someone else in the family was sick and they needed to take on caring duties, um, they fell behind very quickly. And it flavored the assessment and it flavored the rest of the class experience for them in a way that made them feel shameful, in a way that made them feel like they were falling behind, that they weren't being a good student. So that was something I, I, I now have ongoing questions about. The next thing that, that sort of deeply bothers me, I think, about the whole uh, assessment in the context of the last year and a half is the question that Jan MacArthur raised the other day at an event, which was this issue around, are we using assessment to develop the right things? And the particular focus of this event was the idea of belonging. Um, and are we using assessment in any way to support belonging? So we know that assessment is one of the biggest drivers of human behavior. We also know that, um, that our students have a crisis of belonging. It seems to be both a crisis that is true for their university spaces, but also something that bleeds out into the rest of the world for them. So is there some way that we can use assessment as a practice to develop belonging in our classes? So can we co-create students with, uh, co-create assessments with our students? Can we have our students assess each other and assess themselves? Um, can we have students design what the assessment process itself, not just the product of the assessment, but the actual assessment process itself, what that looks like. And then finally, the third idea that I, I want to take forward and that continues to bother me after the last few years is the idea of creating and protecting opportunities to fail. Um, during emergency remote teaching, it became very clear that if a student failed once, our system wanted in many ways or was designed in many ways to, to have students carry that failure forward. And I believe that learning is about failing. If I, if I don't know, if I haven't, if I only ever try the things I succeed at, then I'm not really stretching myself in any exceptional ways. And so one of the things that I think that I'm really excited about learning more about and about putting on the table increasingly is how do we create and protect in our assessment plans and programs the space for our students to fail safely, recover and learn in that process. And Neil, I think I'm going to stop there. Perfect, perfect timing. Thank you very much, Sonali. Yeah, that's some very, very good ideas there. And, and I think it's something that we all have to grapple with. I think Johannes has made a comment here that we need to untangle policing. Um, and there's definitely some agreement. Colleagues, any, any questions or comments? If you feel like grabbing the mic, you can go for it. Thank you. All right. All right, there are some comments. You know, Daniela says, yes, if we untangle assessment from competition. Wow, that, that could be a game changer. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's very, 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 a very good theme that, I'm, that, that we can maybe discuss if we have time at the end is, you know, should assessment be transformed? And if so, how should it be transformed? Um, and, and already we've got academic dishonesty in our, in our chat, you know, students being strategic and seeing um, learning as a tick box activity. Yes, it's about credentialing. Um, I want to become an academic and this is what I need to write this test for. Um, so yeah, any comments, questions? Shanali, anything you would like to respond to in the, in the, from the chat? So I think oh, Neil, I'm gonna text chat because the guys next door have okay. started high speed drilling. 
<laughs> oh, wonderful. Great. Thank you. Shall I take over the share or will you keep sharing for us? Happy to keep sharing for you. Oh, thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. So let's maybe move on to our next, next uh, presenter. Oh, sorry. Technology reminding me of time. Um, so Gabby, welcome. And uh, you're Thanks, more than Sarah. welcome to take take the lead. And again, I'll, I'll let you know when we're four minutes in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Neil. And um, you're welcome, everybody. And I wanted to, I love this um, picture here that my colleague Elise took. Uh, she sent it to us yesterday. And um, it just made me think of that in a storm of COVID, um, many of our lecturers developed resilience. Um, and in the session before, we touched on um, some of the very innovative things that they did. But um, we still had the challenge that um, students, if given the opportunity, they, uh, collab they, they collaborate during, during assessments. And so we really had to advise our lecturers on settings to where to find solutions that um, avoided that, um, that still demonstrated alignment and um, good assessment principles. So, um, especially at the beginning of COVID, we, we tended to be, um, to give more flexibility to students. And um, sometimes we found that backfired when there was cheating. <laughs> so um, as we went along, um, we, we grew, you know, but, but you still need to, um, assessments still need to be fair um, and flexible. You know, we still need to keep adhere to those settings. Um, with respect to, uh, we're using Blackboard, and um, we just really found the uh, test availability exceptions were, were just um, really helpful um, in solving a lot of problems that students experienced when they wrote exams. Um, some of these were, um, if a student had connection problems, um, we could give them another attempt. Um, obviously, we first looked at what they did on, yeah, we just really looked at first what happened to decide if they should be given another attempt. But things like um, um, extending the time for students who had connection problems or for special needs students and um, widening the availability window if they couldn't take the test in the morning when it was scheduled. So that was um, very helpful. And even scheduling groups um, helped a lot there. Um, then um, in the math and engineering departments, um, Numbers was a tool that was used. The advantage of this was that every student got a different variable. So um, that also um, uh, it reduced cheating because you couldn't cheat because you're given another value. Then um, students, um, lecturers gave students simply many authentic assessments, such as projects, portfolios, and there were, there were even orals. And, and orals helped to, a lot to um, to you know, you could, in an oral, you know, students can't really cheat. <laughs> so that was a way to get around cheating. And then um, in students also had to develop presentations. And in developing presentations, students develop a range of skills, um, especially um, technical skills, but also in, in synthesis, in, in um, putting together um, something that is becomes a product. Then uh, many of our lecturers, um, and I, um, I'm in the instructional designer for the humanities faculty, and um, in my faculty, a lot of my lecturers used um, take home exams. So students were given a time to, um, to, to write their, um, to develop their arguments, and um, then they, they submitted it and turned it in, and then obviously they could get, the, the lecturers could check for plagiarism as well. Then um, we we really are very excited and um, what we've been um, spending about the last two years um, looking at a new assessment system. And um, we are going to be introducing um, the Cirrus assessment system next year. And um, this system has is developed for higher education, which, which is a, an advantage it is relevant to higher education. And it, it has won international now awards. An advantage is um, a strict timer control. So, for example, um, after, um, like, if the assessment window has been reached, the student will be kicked out. And um, you can have sections where you can give a, a different time limit per section. So that really helps for, um, to, yeah, so, so there's a, a time limit per section is very helpful. Then what's very new in the system is um, the extensive marking features. And there's a whole workflow around marking. Um, so now students will be able to mark essay questions um, in this assessment and also um, 
um, you can have multiple markers and they can be moderation. And then um, there are also security features, um, which also include um, that you can do online invigilation. So you can see if the student has connection problems, you can um, send the student a message, you can give more time, and so forth. So then, um, basically, at the end of the day, uh, whichever system you use, um, and we really use um, multiple <laughs> multiple systems. Um, we have been using multiple assist systems since um, we are locked down and COVID, but it's very important that the basic assessment principles um, have to be adhered to. And um, and we and obviously um, the need is authentic assessment, which reduces cheating, um, and which then reduces the need for proctoring, which which has um, challenges um, and yeah not only with privacy but also with when is something cheating you know so so we really believe in authentic assessments yeah so that's all from me thank you thank you very much Gabby for your presentation thank you colleagues any questions comments from 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 the past oh, sorry technology is failing me um, any any questions, comments? I've, I've seen some comments in 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 the chat. Um, yeah, uh, you know, assessment means different things for for undergrads versus postgrads. Uh, Gabby, I, I assume that a lot of this was was focused at undergrad level, right? Um, actually, um, yes, yes, yes. It's just yeah. test and um, definitely undergraduates. Um, yeah, in postgraduates, I mm. think they use a lot of orals, if I'm not mistaken, um, and mm. um, turn it in assignments, as, as far as I as far as I am aware. Yes, yes. Okay, cool, great. And uh, I see, I see. There's, there's, there's definitely some, some up. some talk about different approaches to assessment and i think the authentic assessment is probably a, a very good way to go um especially in, in humanities but i know there are certain certain disciplines that that kick back and say well what is uh, authentic assessment in my space um it's a conversation i've been been doing with some of the science colleagues um because one plus one is one according to them um, I don't know if, if you, I see you, you've mentioned numbers. I don't know if they, they had any, any comments around that, if that was discussed with them. Sorry, I know it might be out, out of your space, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if one of my colleagues wants to talk about numbers. Um, it was typically used in the maths department, um, but they have found it yeah, beneficial. I don't yes. Know if okay. My colleagues want to talk on that. <laughs> no. Um, no problem. If anybody wants to grab the mic, if not, no problem. Maybe we can pick this up a, a bit later. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's a, it's it's you've made some very very you, you've given us an insight into into some of your practices, which is great, which is which is what we need to 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 have in these sessions. Um, but yeah, as you can see from the chat, maybe you can respond to some in the chat there, uh, Gabby. Yeah, awesome. Thank um, you so much. Mm. Yeah, I think proctoring tools. Are, yeah, I think um, the lectures. I think you have to trial that out with your students, you know, because um, we did trial it out. Uh, one of my colleagues really trialed it out at Honest the Put. And um, yeah, there were mixed feelings. Um, a, a big problem is um, technology problems and hiccups. So um, mm. yeah, if you want to use that technology, you really have to give um, small little formative assessments until you should get used to that technology. Um, and then you have to see what, what, is, um, what can you classify as cheating? You know, because if a student looks up, they might just be thinking, <laughs> you know? So um, yeah, I, I, it is, it's not a, it is a challenge, it's a challenging. Yes, yeah, yeah. Assessment is contentious. I mean, it's very contentious. I, you know, in, in in our context, we also had very robust conversations about this, where some some disciplines want said a lot of the STEM spaces want want students to sit down, and it's not maybe because they necessarily want it, but it's what they feel or, or the pressure from the accreditation boards. So it's a very, very uh, complex uh, space out there. Mm, uh, it is. Yeah. It is. 
definitely. Definitely. Gabby, thank you so much. Let's maybe shift on to, to our next presenter. That is Anari. Anari, you can take the mic and you can have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm Anari Mankis from the University of the Free State. Um, I am going to, I don't want to repeat what others are saying, and I've already heard a lot of things that I'm, I really do agree with and that, I've, that I can relate to. Um, I just want to talk about perhaps one thought broken up into three parts. So what we have seen in 2020 is that obviously an increase in the use of online assessment and the use of technology for assessment. Um, and a lot of, you know, in our case, but also in terms of the, the, um, the higher education landscape of South Africa, we, we did actually, we did a, a research project a while back um, with 24 higher education institutions on specifically with lecture, lecturing staff to get their perceptions and experiences of remote emergency teaching and their perspectives of what the future looks like for um, teaching and learning. So I'm going to, to share a bit of, of that um, in terms of an overall idea that's not just the University of the Free State or not just my experience, although these experiences are also our experiences. Um, but it was really interesting to see the, the shared experiences. And one of the things that came out strongly in that, um, in that project was that, so what I mentioned was an increase in informative assessment, um, an increase in um, the use of technology, obviously for assessment, because most people went completely online. But what was interesting about that is that many people started to realize the, the advantages of continuous assessment versus the traditional model of semester test, semester test exam. And that is really important to, um, to note because that is a positive shift and hopefully something that we can sustain moving forward because it also links to what Gabby mentioned at the end of her, of her presentation about authentic assessment. So we, we saw more authentic ways of assessing, better ways of um, assessment fit for the purpose, assessment aligned to the outcomes, better ways to, to assess students than your traditional sit down examination. The problem is that many people added onto their modules what they already were doing before. So they moved the, the, whatever they did in the face to face environment, they just tried to digitize that somehow and then add on to that additional um, assessment. So, so in many cases, students were overloaded with assessments. And, and I, I heard earlier on also comments about that, using assessment to engage students, even if it's just a five uh, more quiz in the beginning of a class, but all of that adds up if a student has to do that in all of their modules. So um, we need to find the best of both worlds. What works very well in an online environment when we start moving to a more blended approach, which I also am not sure whether that's going to happen in January next year already. I think people are a bit optimistic to think that is that is going to happen exactly like that. But in a new normal um, that everybody's talking about when we move to a more blended approach, we need to really help, um, help lecturers find the best of both. What worked very well in a face-to-face -face environment, what worked very well in an online environment without just adding everything together and overloading themselves and the students. That's one point. The next point is one of the things that is a big challenge, one big challenge with um, online assessment that, that we saw across institutions is feedback. Suddenly it's like people are not really sure how to give proper feedback to students on assessment in an, in an online environment. And um, I don't know what the feedback practices was in a face-to-face -face environment. Maybe it's because we were able to monitor the feedback practices more closely in an online environment. But feedback is a really big problem and something that we need to really work hard on is how do we make sure that um, in an, with, techno with the, all the affordances that technology has in terms of online assessment and the ways in which we can incorporate that moving forward, how do we make sure that we also give proper um, feedback to our students? And then the last point I want to mention, and this is also something I feel very, very strongly about. I saw that um, Prof Tronia said um, that he is, has, extreme, has extreme dislike of proctoring. Um, Dolph earlier on mentioned bee in his bonnet. I also have a big bee in my bonnet about um, proctoring. So um, it's, it's the assessment integrity versus assessment design 
argument. So I just wanted to put a quote there from a lecturer in this study that I mentioned earlier on from a university at the, um, not the University of the Free State, but a university in South Africa. Um, I'm just going to read that. There was also a marked increase in student dishonesty and the student disciplinary bodies were simply overwhelmed by the number of reported incidents. So the students effectively got away with it. And this unfortunately results in a marked drop of standards and integrity of the courses we teach. Um, many, many, many similar comments like this. This is not the only one. Many comments like this from all institutions, how they saw an increase in cheating. The problem with this is how do you understand academic dishonesty? Um, I think we've got a big responsibility as, as people work in learning design areas and, um, and education areas um, about, our, our, about what the understanding is of academic dishonesty. If our experience is that such a large number of our students are being dishonest right across the country, um, we should be asking ourselves why. We can't place the blame of this squarely on the students. It's very unlikely that the vast majority of students across the country are just inherently dishonest. We must really start to highlight the links between academic dishonesty and assessment design, which is a lecturer responsibility, as well as students' confidence in their ability to be successful in assessment. I mean, that can be addressed to some extent to be very, very clear about the instructions that we communicate to students about our expectations. That is also a lecturer responsibility. So this quote and ones like this places the blame of the academic standards squarely on the student. And that is not, um, that is not the way to go. So proctoring is just putting, um, it's, it's just um, repeating a face-to-face -face type of assessment on an online environment, watching students while they write a test. We should be looking at different ways of assessing, more authentic ways of assessing, and also looking at our responsibility in terms of how we design our assessments, but also how we communicate our instructions to students. Um, and I, then I believe we will be addressing the issue more than with with something like proctoring. It's really um, a responsibility that we have to, um, to make sure that, that people understand um, this, this issue better, I think. Um, thanks. Thank you, Anri, thank you. Um, yeah, I think you've highlighted, you know, a, a couple of, 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 of key points here. You know, definitely authentic assessment and, and assessment design is, is one part that, that I also agree with, I think it, it, it needs to be driven down everybody's gullets, um, to be quite honest. But, you know, yeah, it, it, it is a very important thing that sometimes it's just a, a matter of fact for for those that set set up the, the, the exams. Oh, yeah, man, stop it. Um, so so yeah so that's always always the problem and I, and I don't know about other contexts but that quote I think rings true for 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 my context and I've heard it in other contexts as well. Um, there are a couple of great comments here, um, definitely supporting what you are saying. You know, they, they, there's a need to transform how we how we design assessment. Um, and. Uh, as Johanna said, if you if you can Google the answer, you're asking the wrong question, um, which I'll be stealing. Thank you, or, or repurposing as a quote. Um, any any comments from any of the colleagues? And as Nicholas says, untangling that interplay that needs to continue in different levels. Any comments, questions? Liana, you've got your hand up. Yes, I just want to agree with that. We also saw that uh, with. Um, the thing is, the students did a lot better than previous years with the online learning. But I mean, mm. there's so many times they got more opportunities. It was more staggered. It was more... Um, so I don't think it automatically means that they've cheated. Um, we now, for example, had the problem with the students that now returned in some faculties that they are now doing worse in sit-down exams than they've ever done in previous years. And it, it's for me, I think it's high time we should start rethinking what we assess because if you out there in the work, um, if you work, you talk to colleagues, you're not sitting with a proctoring and mm. it's about applying the stuff, working with your colleagues. And um, like it all goes back to authentic. Um, 
that's just my two cents worth. Yes, yes, very, very true, very important. We really do need to to relook the way we do assessment. Any any other pressing comments that, or or shall we move on and then we can pick Neil? up this? Yes, JP. Thanks, JP. Um, just to Anari, I missed the part of, about that research that was done. I think I saw it somewhere, but maybe you can just point us somewhere to it because I think it's like always your. Um, you know, you're building on, on research informed, you know, um, things are always so commendable, but um, yeah, that was just a question or maybe request if it's available to, to let us have it somewhere. Thanks. Uh, thanks, yes. JPS. Yes, that is a report that was um, what that we did together with the CHE and USAF, Um and that report is available and I will um, find out if there's a link for it. Otherwise, I'll just um, email you. Thank you so much. Yeah, please. And uh, yeah, maybe if, if we're allowed to share it, maybe we can share it, you know, as, as part of the documents um, that we're going to share after up to you, I think. Uh, that would be great. Um, and hopefully it can become a discussion point for us in our departments and hopefully in our institutions, because I think this is something that's very true. And I think Liana's point is very valid. Um, I mean, I had discussions with lecturers that said, you know, it, it, they worried that the students are doing so well, but they don't think about how they were asking their questions, even though it was really good um, questions that they asked uh, for that discipline. Um, any other comments, colleagues? I think this is a, a, a very hot topic at the moment, um, even as we are going into exams or, or starting them next week. And I know we're all in different spaces. Shall we maybe move on? Um, JP, I think you are up next. Um, I think it's Solana. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Uh, That's fine. I'm always ready to be next, but <laughs> Alana can go first. Um, thank you very much, Alana Riley from Fort Hare. Um, yeah, in terms of, in terms of assessment, um, we, the mm. first thing that came to mind was with regards to the lecturer's mindset. And this is not necessarily rooted in an online space, but the mindset in terms of, um, in terms of assessment and what is, uh, what is the purpose of assessment. The, the fact that they don't understand the, or you know, that they, they, they don't want to get their heads around or they can't get their heads around, um, understanding the different types of assessment, what are the different purposes of, for, for assessment. Um, so it depends on um, what you're trying to achieve with that assessment. And just to pick up on some of the discussion that has already happened as I've been watching the chat, um, you know, the, the issues around um, focusing on a more traditional assessment. So seeing a valid assessment as your assignments, tests and exams and seeing everything outside of that as peripheral and um, and this has been i mean this is a problem i i, I actually teach the assessment module on our pg dip and getting that um that message across even in a face-to-face -face context um, has proved to be extremely difficult because you know, students have come through, we've all come through a particular education system, and um, our students have come through high school, um, and they are used to regurgitating. What is it that the, 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 the teacher wants? What is it that the lecturer wants? Instead of um, adapting any activity to, um, to become an assessment activity for a particular purpose. And so, um, when with uh, with uh, the advent of the pandemic of of COVID nineteen at Fort Hare, we've had to we had to shift primarily um, uh, shift from a traditional setup to a CAS model, and lecturers have struggled with this CAS model, and they struggle with it because in their minds, um, a continuous assessment um, impacts negatively on the integrity of the assessments, um, and so. Because in, a, in, in, in our current LMS, you can, and we're using Blackboard, but it, it's true for any LMS, is that 
you can mark just about anything um, in the LMS. Any activity, anything that the students produce can be marked. And um, the integrity of assessments can be maintained as long as your assessments are aligned to uh, your outcomes that are fit for purpose. And this is something that our lecturers have definitely struggled with. And it's not just the lecturers, the students also struggle with that. Um, it, because they have become so used to, you know, two tests and assignment and um, exams, that is what they deem um, kind of valid assessments. And so that shift has been quite one that is that they've struggled with um, significantly. Um, and then I want to speak to skills. So the, the level of the skill um, in terms of both the lecturer and the student, but specifically the lecturer in the design of the assessments in an online space, um, in aligning those assessments to the outcomes and the and including the soft skills, because we are supposed to be developing, we're supposed to be using assessments to develop our students. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, so that, that does a, those are not being used. The, the purpose of the assessment is simply to get a mark, not to develop the students, not to um, use it for mastery learning, not to sh um, uh, not to um, uh, shape or uh, develop a particular learning path where, where those students need it. I mean, there are so many opportunities. Um, and something that Dolph also mentioned in the chat, um, speaks to the um, speaks to the, the tensions around um, the design of the assessments and the accrediting bodies. So, for instance, in accounting, um, in our accounting department, SICA um, accredits are uh, you know the uh, the CA stream, and so there are there there, there are concerns about um, the shift to CAS and. Um, and there've been certain exceptions. And I mean, these are all, they are inherent opportunities and risks. The opportunities, of course, that our students are, um, there is the opportunity that they can use um, different tools to achieve the same thing um, and to be able to, uh, to be able to, um, to produce knowledge, to produce um, content. Uh, and to to integrate at you know at at a variety of levels, um, as opposed to uh, a traditional form of assessment, and the opportunities to to give the feedback to the students. I mean, I, I, the the LMSs really do make our lives a lot easier, but that resistance from the lecturers, but also the resistance from the students, because the um, the lecturers do uh, the students do also. Um, they do also uh, play off what the, you know, that they, they take cues from the lecturers. So if the lecturers are doing the very basics and they are, 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 um, are using offline courses online, I've noted the minute, Neil, thanks. If they're, if they're using their offline tools and just trying to put them online and maybe add to them, as one of the other presenters have, have noted, this is a risk because our students are going to Google. They're going to work together. Um, whereas, if the design is, if, if the design of the assessment is right, um, then we are going to be closer to achieving um, what we want to achieve. And I'll stop there, um, since we are close to that uh, five minutes, and um, we can we can chat about some of those points. I think. Thank you, Alana. Thank you. Um, yeah, there, there's, there's definitely some, some very important points you've raised again here. Um, any comments or questions from, from, from participants? Okay, well, great. Well, all I want to say is, you know, um, there has been some chat in, in the chat to, to, to say, you know, that alignment of assessment to outcomes you know, is 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 one that that is sometimes lacking, um, and there are some that, as you point out, that we have have little to no control over. Um, I mean, we had I had a conversation with somebody in our law faculty who's 
we had the same problems that that you're discussing about now in terms of the llb program so they expected to do a certain outcome but it's it's just not possible or viable at the moment and especially how the students have learned um so there's there's a lot that we can we can definitely say about design and and aligning that and i think it's something that that, that that's important um even granny says yeah there's a there's a there's a need for that change of mindset around assessments for marks um and and you know bringing a change is is a student experience and and i fully agree i think it is it is something we need to really have have deep conversations about um but yeah, maybe maybe I'll ask you, but I'll ask you after or, or later. You know, how do we do that? But that's a, that's probably another presentation in itself. Um, cool. Colleagues, any other questions, comments? You're more than welcome to take the mic. Uh, there's a question from Nicola. If you are on Twitter, please share your handles here. Um, and Samson also makes a comment. I agree there should be alignment between formative and summative tasks in terms of level of difficulty. Um, yeah, I wonder if that happens as, as wide as we want, want it to, or as wide as we hope. <laughs> if I can just I know, sorry, Lana, can I please, yeah. sorry, can I just can I just jump in quickly, Neil? Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that we also forget that as human beings, we are strategic. And the expectation mm. for us to expect a student who is sitting at home with all of the resources that they need to answer a question, not to use those resources. I think it is, it is an unfair expectation because if it were you and or I, we would make use of whatever resources are available to us. Okay. Yeah. And so, and, 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 and we'd be lying. We'd be, be bullface lying <laughs> if we, that we wouldn't do that. Okay, because yes. what we do is we draw on the resources that we have available. So we are now, um, we are also now in terms of, you know, in terms of assessment honesty and in and, 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 and online space, we are expecting students to um, behave in a way that we wouldn't necessarily behave ourselves. And therefore, going back to Johannes's point earlier, if the student can Google the answer, you are asking the wrong question. Um, we need to we need to do better for our students, and and assessment drives learning. And so we need to design our assessments in such a way that we are going to drive the students' learning and shape the students' learning in a way that is going to. Um, that is going to meet those outcomes so that they're going to develop the skills and the knowledge base that we need them to in order to um, when, when they reach the end of that course. But to, mm -hmm. to apply a different set of rules. I mean, if I'm looking for something, I want, I want to know something. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop on Google. That's, you know, that's going to be mm. my first port of call. And then I'm going to follow a particular trail. So why do we expect our students to behave any differently? Exactly, exactly. Alana, thank you very much. I th think we do have to move on. Um, JP, I think now it's you. I've been, I nearly jumped you, Alana. So JP, <laughs> um, <laughs> your five right. minutes starts now. I'll put the one minute call in. Thank you very much, Neil. Um, hello, everyone. Very nice to be among everyone. Uh, just a few remarks before I start, not with my bullet points, but with the background picture is you know it's just amazing how actually everything resonates that you know all my colleagues have shared uh from their parts of the of of, of the world that that's high ed in south africa i guess um and all the themes just ringing through you know uh, professional bodies um you know the whole question about what cheating is or not the you know the adapting you know assessments to be <laughs> to be more useful, you know, meaningful, uh, nuanced, etc. I mean, all those things uh, I can just, you know, absolutely echo um, from from our side. I could have I could have said it also. So I just wanted to say that. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to say that you know I just um, literally um, taking a just a few points uh, of you know of of of, a, of what can be a long talk because um, it's been a long 18 months or I don't know even how many months it was until now 
uh, just to, to reflect kind of more broadly from an institutional perspective. All right, so um, firstly on the background, and there's definitely a, a, a nautical theme coming out in this conference, because um, those of you who've seen um, Neil's slides earlier also has, has kind of rough seas with the lighthouse. So at least his slide has some hope there in between, whereas my slide, I, I think, is, um, is maybe particularly you know, indicative of, of, of the current still churning of, you know, of wild seas, that, that's our current environment. And that's really how we experienced it, um, you know, since the lockdown. And, you know, we, we've been very grateful and thankful um, for that we had quite a big team. So that's the other thing I, I took up from, uh, from what Neil and Nicola shared around maybe smaller teams really battling, but we had quite a, quite a big uh, team. Everybody, you know, jumped in, to make that shift to do the necessary, et cetera, to the emergency remote teaching. You know, my first remark just on that, uh, on the background to all of this is that, you know, it was such, actually, it was emergency, but I think the team got it right to, to actually try and think about how can one, even in very, very hard and chaotic times, try now that, you know, we are, are wanting to do something or having to do something differently, looking at things a little bit differently from a teaching and learning perspective. So I think luckily that was kind of built in, you know, one of the resources that, that was created around assessment was so-called thinking tool, like thinking through your assessment and, you know, that typical question, do you want to do this or that or that, or that? And when I first saw it, I, I nearly fell off my chair because the first question was, do I need an exam? And I'm just like, okay, are we going there? You know, are we, you know, can it be that radical? Um, and indeed, many of the things that I think we, we uh, proposed or kind of subliminally proposed or kind of built into, uh, you know, useful approaches to, to assessment, um, you know, basically was quite radical. And um, so the, the bottom line is that I think there was, there was good uptake on some of the new ideas. Um, we had whole faculties, you know, doing immense work, you know, standing together, creating their own uh, more contextual um, hubs around planning, teaching and learning assessment, like engineering was still, you know, the, what, what happened there is amazing and, and all the other faculties, not to discount any of them, but that's the one I saw. Uh, just interesting, and that's my last general remark, and then I'll go to more specific points, is the interesting that, that thing that can happen if everyone at a faculty or department uses different uh, and especially more formative assessment strategies, you know, flexible, formative, etc., is that uh, it often gets quite cluttered for a student because they need to now keep track of not just a test, uh, you know, um, you know, the essay and the exam. Now they need to keep track of doing work every week for every module and there's different points and every every lecturer thinks they, they're doing wonderful things and, and expecting that that deep work from the students but then essentially it clashes if this, if the lecturers and the different modules don't coordinate with each other so I think that's also something that we've that we've learned right so coming back to what I wanted to say was first of all um, very not tongue-in-cheek to invigilate or not to invigilate that is not with a question mark a question and that just points to an interesting phenomenon, I think, that happened. A kind of not a split, because I think there are more that says it's, it's not the question, but there still are, you know, pockets of uh, departments that think, you know, um, the only way is students must be on campus and they must be invigilated, or if they are remote, they, they must be proctoring, you know, full video, uh, you know, video proctoring, etc. cetera. Um, but I think at the moment we are you know, the balance is swinging towards, no, but like, like, like it's been shared, like Johannes has shared in the chat and everyone is, um, you know, that, that's not what it's all about. I mean, the, um, we've realized the, the anxiety it creates for, for students, but not only for students, also for people administering the system, also for lecturers who must interpret all those, all the, say, bloody flags that come up through proctoring. Um, you know, just the immense extra time and stress and the disciplinary, you know, committees that follow from that, etc. Um, so luckily, we didn't, 
make a move on any big system and we really a bit in limbo on, on all these things. Right, so that's my first question. Uh, we've learned and I think there's a certain maturity in the institution uh, to not quickly jump to a tool or a technology or a quick fix, you know, for some things, but ask what does it really mean, you know, from a teaching and learning perspective. It also, I think, combines with we having a new assessment policy, which is quite excellent. And from that, um, I just wanted to um, to quote something. They, they, I, I, um, the colleagues, you know, took it kind of back to the, um, I guess, Latin asidere. Uh, for assessment, which is beautiful, which means to sit beside. Um, and I think the kind of uh, thing we want to foster is this idea of assessment being a two-way conversation between lecturer and student. And it can serve multiple purposes. So I just, I really love that. And basically the, the, the policy allows for contextuality um, in different knowledge domains, uh, you know, assessment can be thought of differently, etc., and also flexible. So I think, at, at least from a policy, we're on the right track. And uh, now we are busy thinking about how can we uh, get this um, uh, get this out to faculties. And that's how our strategies. We are planning that now. Uh, I see this one minute, Neil. So um, just quickly, uh, on top of that, we applied for a strategic project which we received and basically we're now taking it low and slow. We realized we've learned a lot, need to change maybe, but we're not going to do it quickly. We're going to do it properly with a research foundation and, and build the foundation strongly. On technical side, you know, most of the things that um, was asked for is plugins for more specialized e-assessment. And most people are still happy with the LMS and what it can do for, for the type of assessments we want around new e-assessment systems. You know, we've realized, you know, once you reach out, you get hounded by these companies, but we I tell them now, we first, you know, want to find out what we actually want, and then we're gonna choose what we need. And just the interesting new development is a big need for uh, a growth of peer assessment. And then of course, you know, what possible digital systems can support that. All right, thank you so much. Neil, are you there? I just saw that your one minute was three minutes ago, so I spoke way too long. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alex, I wonder if Neil has got problems. Neil? Yeah, maybe. Um, I wonder. Maybe. Maybe. Honest, for, the time, just think, yeah. for time's sake, um, we may need to move on to the next uh, um, presentation because we've got till two left. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so JP, we'll take the questions in the in the chat if you don't mind. Yeah, yes, for please sure. go. No, 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 yes. let's go. Let's go for it. Yeah, Dino, go. Please go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dolph. Um, you know, I feel a sense of comfort. Um, in a sense that the concerns that I'm about to raise have been um, stated by the previous presenters. The first one being how students view assessment, that students view assessment as, 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 as a trap and we need to move away from that perception because this trap becomes a gateway to becoming a graduate. And online assessments may have heightened that notion because it appears that assessments tend to favor learning instructors than our students. Therefore, students may often feel the need to please when completing their tasks instead of um, learning from the assessments that they've been given from uh, by, their, by their lecturers. And what we've also learned is that we might have been over assessing our students pre-COVID. Um, I think from um, experience with teaching students online, that has taught me that we might have been over assessing our students prior COVID, uh, before COVID. Now, on, on the other hand, we need to consider that 
the, the planning, the typical planning preparation, as well as the development for a fully online university course takes roughly six to nine months before the course can be delivered. Now, moving from emergency to emergency remote teaching to online learning was not so much of an easy transition for lecturers themselves, because in our context, um, this could even take longer because designing an online learning material is a multifaceted task. And when we look at it, um, issues of digital literacy from both ends of students as well as instructors come to play. Um, and a speaker mentioned as well that the lecture's wellness comes to play because the move to emergency remote teaching didn't just affect students, it affected lecturers. And certain lecturers didn't have enough digital literacy to carry out the teaching and learning. Right, now, what is it that we need to change? And these are just uh, perspectives that I share and that our approach to assessing students' learning, especially in spaces where communication is delayed, is very much um, problematic. And we need to change our approach, the way in which we approach assessment so that assessment does favor our students and students don't see it as means of um, pleasing our, uh, their lecturers. And stemming from this notion of assessment, of an assessment being a trap, is the challenge of what Anna Rhee mentioned um, of academic dishonesty. But can we blame our students? Because when you feel stuck, borrowing, and I say this in inverted commas, becomes an easy alternative. And more so when, you, when you're pressed for time or simply not knowing what is academic um, dishonesty, not knowing that what you're doing is academic dishonesty. Therefore, um, Possible suggestions would be that we involve our students in their own learning through interactive assessment. And this by allowing students an opportunity to engage with each other, to engage with us as learning instructors. And as well as um, the role that we play as learning instructors, the feedback that we give our students should be a two way street. That if we expect our students, to interact with the feedback, we need to provide meaningful and constructive feedback when assessing our students, as well as allowing our students to self-assess before making submissions, making use of things such as checklists for students to self-assess their own work before they make um, a submission. But another uh, um, suggestion would be for students to know exactly what Hello. is expected of them. Hello. Dog? Yes, I think, um, sorry to interrupt, you know, but we, we have to close up and give uh, Johannes also an opportunity, if you don't mind. Okay, okay. So another suggestion would be to scaffold the assessment criteria to our students so that they know exactly what is expected of them. So I'm just going to move on to these suggestions and leave out everything else that I had um, uh, anticipated on presenting, that we could encourage our students to unpack these questions collectively through the use of these online discussion forums by guiding them through the following questions, asking them if you've given your students perhaps an essay brief, ask them um, what is the broader topic, what is the focus, what are the restricting words, and what are the instruction words, break down the instruction. If you ask your students to critically analyze something, you need to make sure as an instructional designer that you know what it means to critically analyze something and help your students unpack what that word means. That What does the word argue mean? Argue this or discuss this? And as well as how many parts are there to be answered in this question brief? And how would you rephrase question, this particular question to show that you understand what um, you mean? Then the final point I'm going to make is embed academic literacy skills in course content. And these are discipline-specific modules. 
And um, this may come from a biased point of view because I come from the academic literacy background, but despite the university having developmental modules that support academic literacy, these skills I feel should be incorporated to ensure that um, the practice and application is thorough even in the discipline specific modules. And um, thank you so much for that. Um, <laughs> we'll cut <Okay>. short, <laughs> but <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Johannes, I just saw a comment there that uh, <laughs> someone said that you used the chat for your presentation. Um, we've yeah, got I, literally I, a few I seconds said, available. I said I would do that. I, um, so I typed it all in there, and I'm simply saying that what you have to realize is assessment is the first step in evaluation and you're actually getting the lecturer's success, not the students. Uh, the student is a client, they pay. Um, the other thing I'm saying is that instead of trying to lock a student in front of the screen um, and scaring the hell out of him, which is completely invalid because you're not um, testing whether the student knows the answers, you're testing whether the student is survive a proctoring session. So we need to have another look at um, the, and okay, I'm asking you, is, does it mean that we're passing the blame to the next least vulnerable person, which is the lecturer? Yeah, um, and then the lecturer can pass that blame further to the, to the um, institution. That's why I said one of the problems we have is in our um, uh, institute, in, in the institutes, the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, certifying bodies, they very often have very few people with any qualification of education, and so they want a high stakes exam. Um, so th the thing is way more complex, but Dorf, I've said more or less what I wanted to say in the chat, um, and it would do no justice um, for me to try and rush any further, which takes us um, to 12 o'clock, which is time to go to the next session. Yeah, just colleagues, just to wrap up this, honestly, I think we can continue the whole day with this topic. Um, unfortunately, we ran out of time. I want to thank all the presentations, all the panel members, everybody for their contribution. Uh, again. Uh, uh, good decision we made on the topic and let's meet in the, the, the other session in a few seconds. Thank you so much colleagues, all the best.